Let me address you first as dear invincible and fearless Ajits, starting with your president, Gopal Hosur, your mentor, Ashok Dalwai of the IAS. You know, the IAS officers are generalists. They can fit into any job, but he is an expert on agriculture, as I have just seen. And I've read about the motto of the Ajits. Ajit hai, Abit hai. I have not come across so many Abits in my whole life, including that of the police. Because I think that fear is a very important uh, human instinct keeps us alive. And I will just start by two assassination attempts which were mentioned by somebody. First one was in Jalandhar, where, which is the armed headquarters of the Punjab police. And we have an officer's mess there. And I used to go very often and stay in that mess. And my wife used to accompany me. And we were, and at seven o'clock in the morning, as is my habit even today, we would go out for a walk. My wife is no longer there. She died three months ago, but I still go for that walk. And this, uh, I uh, never expected the assassins to come there. And uh, because it was a very well guarded um, uh, headquarters of the armed police. But these fellows were very clever. They had painted a jeep in police colors with police written on it. And in front, along with the driver who was in police uniform, there was somebody dressed as an inspector. And behind him were four others from the same group of assassins. One as a head constable and three others as constables. And they were all properly dressed in the police, in the Punjab police uh, uh, colors. When they saw an inspector, they gave him a butt salute. They opened the door. Otherwise, the low door is always locked during this, uh, uh, when, when the terrorist activity began, the doors were locked. Before that, of course, it used to be always open. And uh, they entered. And they came up to the mess. And around the mess were three uh, uh, police, uh, Punjab policemen uh, armed uh, with, their, uh, with their muskets. And they were shot dead. They were the first people who were shot dead. And they were all Sikhs. And I heard that gunfire and I knew they had come for me. And as soon as they looked over the wall and began shooting at me, I, uh, uh, you know, my reflexes were good. So I slept on, I just lay down on the floor. My wife didn't understand what was happening. And she began bawling and asking, what has happened to you? Whereupon she got the bullet. And uh, I, and they, and they thought that they had killed me. And they got into that Jeep and, and went, went away from another side. They, they knew all the topography of the place. While going, they also shot at the, at the guard in the CRP, uh, CRP uh, headquarters. I mean, not headquarters, we had given them a temporary place where they stored their arms, etc. And they had mounted a guard there. So that poor guard was also shot. So not only three Punjab policemen, but one CRP man was also shot. But... Uh, and, and then they announced that, uh, please pick up the body of your DGP from so-and-so place. Of course, there was no body. And people who came running, uh, our officers, when they heard about it, so I said, let's chase them. And we chased, we went running after them. We got into our vehicles, went up to that place. But they had, they had obviously kept a... Uh, uh, a, a getaway vehicle in which they got into and went away. Later on, they were taken, they were caught. One of our own people had helped them, one of our own people inside the mess. 
So he was also caught and uh, uh, they were prosecuted. Uh, so that was the first assassination attempt. It was done very cleverly. And uh, uh, the prime minister, when he heard about it, he asked me to come and meet him. And he said that now I must have a, a proper IPS officer in charge of my security. Because till then I had not bothered about such. I, I didn't have that, that kind of experience before. In, in Mumbai, we never went with any security. We just uh, went wherever we liked. And without anybody to accompany you, I used to go for my jog in the morning. So it was very funny that this assassination attempt led to so much security later on, where your own privacy is totally destroyed. But it was a very cleverly done assassination attempt. And it is not possible to be uh, uh, um, abhit at such times. I mean, you, uh, I got a phone call asking me whether I would like to continue there. I said, of course. I may not have liked to join this place, but now that I have this experience, I'm certainly not going to give up. On the contrary, I have to redouble my, my uh, efforts to, to settle these people. So that was the first assassination attempt. The, I, I got only a scratch. They fired 59 rounds in Jalandhar and they smashed the whole of the mess. The frontage was totally smashed. It was all glass all around. I got a small scratch on my on my arm. My wife got a bullet through her leg, and she had to get it uh, the the wound uh, you know opened. And it anyway it didn't it didn't affect her because it didn't touch the bone. But in uh, in book uh, book in what is the capital of Romania uh, now my at the moment, Bucharest. Where I stayed, Bucharest. Bucharest, yes, Bucharest. Bucharest. Of course, I've stayed there for four years. So in Bucharest, in Bucharest they, uh, I don't know how they got in. That was after Ceausescu was shot. They got in, they crossed the, the borders. They must have paid the border guards just five dollars or something, because that is what the going rate was at that time. And uh, they, entered and they staked out the whole place. They saw that I, I went for, for a walk in a certain direction. Now the our uh, raw, and then from the raw, they passed on the information to the IB. So from the IB, I got a message that I should take local uh, security, that I should approach the foreign office in Romania and that there was, a, there was going to be an attempt on my life. So the first thing I did, I stopped walking along that same place where I used to go because they only look at your, your normal uh, routine and they take you on your routine. So I changed it and I went to all sorts of places along different routes for my walk, but I didn't go along the path which I normally went. It was only after about 21 days or 22 days that I decided that now uh, they won't expect me to go by this way. And that was a very good walk. So we took it and my goodness, they were there. When I heard the, their vehicle screech, I knew that again, that they had come for me. They jumped out. There were four of them, uh, the driver and one other office, one other man in front and two behind and the, the two in front the driver and the, they, they uh, remained as guards and the other two chased me shooting all the time. And I can tell you, I was uh, 62 years old at that time. They were the opposite, I presume. They must have been around 26 and, uh, and they chased me and they kept firing. I suppose because they were firing, uh, they could not uh, catch up. But I got into some house nearby on the side and just at the door of that house, I got the bullet on my on my back. And then that I was landed up in the ICU there, which is uh, a very egalitarian hospital. And uh, uh, for 21 days, 21 or 22 days, um, but till the wound healed, the wound was, uh, you know, the bullet passed right 
uh, uh, through me. And I won't mention the place from where it passed because I'm still having the repercussions of that. Even if I wish to urinate, I have to sit down. I, I can't stand, I can't urinate standing up. So this is the, this, but the fear, I'm talking about it in reference to the abit part of it. It is not possible or to be abit in such cases. Uh, you, 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 you know that they have come for you, so you have to take your precautions. And in one place, I, I lay down and try to save myself. In the other place, I ran. I ran and I he ran faster than these boys. And two of them, the, but the Romanian security was excellent. Excellent. I mean, I can tell you that they are very well trained. I suppose they had Ceausescu's old, old time. And then they got two of them. They brought down two of them and they caught one more of the other two. And only one man escaped, but he escaped in another escape car. So there were five of them I found out and they disappeared. And they told me that they would catch their, the two of them, but they never managed to do that. I don't know from where they escaped, whether they escaped through Bulgaria, which was also quite close. And so this was uh, about uh, being Abhit and uh, the assassination attempts uh, will, 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 be, will force you not to be an Abhit. You have to be always careful. Well, let me now talk about Bijapur. I used to be the SP at Sholapur from 1962 to 64. The SP at, at Bijapur was a Goan like me. I come from Goa and so did he. And incidentally, we were, I didn't know him then, but we were uh, neighbors uh, from my mother's village and his village were next to each other. Uh, Padmakar Hallankar, very fine officer. I is uh, no more, but he was DGP of Karnataka. He was commissioner of police, Bangalore. I, I remember him with great, with great affection. Uh, at one stage in Delhi, we were staying near the, on the same building, and we, uh, uh, we. So he used to come from Bombay because his wife was from Bombay. So whenever he went home to his wife's place, he would, they would both come and have breakfast with us, and then. Take a, and then their car would be sent from Bijapur and they would go there. I had mentioned to Satish Manashinde that the first bishop, <clears throat> the local clergy of Goa, the first man, the first priest, the local priest, a Goan priest who was made a bishop, was made bishop of Bijapur. And though he, he like, like me and everybody else who was, and all our ancestors were converted, and we had castes and we had we had our own surname and uh, we, uh, our surnames were all changed and we were given the surname of the of the priest if the priest was a ribero you got, you got that surname irrespective of your caste so they wanted to break that caste system they did not they did not succeed they wanted to see that we stopped speaking our own mother tongue which is konkani they only succeeded as far as the, the elite, what you call it, is concerned. But though they also, at home, they did speak Konkani, but they also started learning Portuguese. But the poor Christians were the great majority, and they mostly belong to the, to the uh, what you call the OBCs now. I mean, they, they, they had never uh, learned Portuguese, and they, they continue to speak Konkani. So that also the Portuguese did not this. But what I was talking about is that this gentle, this uh, priest was made the Bishop of Bijapur. And when he was made Bishop of Bijapur, his surname had been made, his family surname had been uh, changed to Castro. He was Mateus de Castro, Dom Mateus de Castro. And he, but he added his Hindu surname, old, family surname, which was Mahale. You know, it was a very common Saraswat surname. And uh, uh, he was from my wife's village of Divar. And that is how, <laughs> so Bijapur has got a connection with me through Hallankar 
and Mateus de Castro. But Mateus de Castro, I did not know, this is 200 years ago. But, but Mark Halankar I did, and he was a good friend of mine. So that was about Bijapur. Another connection I have with your, with your uh, uh, institution, the Sainik School, was that one of my friends became the principal of the school, Siriako Lovo. He was of my age, he was born in the same year, but he went to St. Javier's College. He was a very good student, always first class, a first class student right through his university days. And uh, I went to another college where commerce only was, was there was only one, com those days two commerce colleges in Bombay. Now there are so many, you can't count. There was only one law college in those days and I went to that later. There now you have so many law colleges. So this is uh, Siriaco. Siriaco was his elder brother, was my colleague in the IPS. He, was, he had a fantastic reputation. <clears throat> he became, he was in charge of the Prime Minister's security at one stage when the Prime Minister Moraji Desai had an air accident. He was the, the, uh, the main um, person in charge of his security. And uh, later he became the director of CBI and he was the director of CBI when I was um, um, in the CRP at the headquarters in Delhi. Uh, the, this is my connection to your institution. Now I'll just, uh, I was told by Mani, uh, Satish Manishin there and the other gentleman who came to see me at my house that he would like to hear something about uh, my career and how, you, you know, people today also tell me, uh, Rivero Saab, in your time, it was like that. And now it is quite different. We are not, we don't know why that time cannot come back. Well, it is a different epoch and a different time. You can't expect the same situation now. I, was, I often think to myself, <laughs> That if I if I was the commissioner today, I think I would I would just check up the job. It is not possible to 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 function in the way it is being dealt with now because they uh, uh, the commissioner is no longer in charge of the of his own men, and unless they know who is in charge, uh, it's very difficult to run an organ an uh, uh, organization or a force like the police or, or even in the army, say the army, if, if the defense minister began, begins saying where he should attack and where he should not, or what should be the tactics when I suppose we lose every war, but in every battle. And this is what is happening on the streets of, of the cities. They are losing every battle because they have to follow the instructions that are given to them by the politician, which is not their job. It's the job of the police. You choose the correct man, and if he doesn't deliver, you change him. But you can't decide to, to, uh, to run the force. Well, after I had retired, I found that the, uh, the home minister here used to call the, even the inspectors to, to his office and tell them what to do. So I, I picked up my phone and remonstrated with him. How can you do that? And I wrote in the newspapers, particularly in the Marathi papers. So he got a little upset and told me, what are you doing, Rivero Saab? You are, you, are, you are making fun of me. I said, but you are, you are running the force and that is not your job. And then, uh, so, he, but they are doing it. And that is what is causing all the, 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 all the blips that you see uh, in the service. So let me tell you about four postings, the last posting that I had, and then the main things that happened there and how I lived, how I dealt with it. The first was in Thane. I was the first police commissioner of Thane. Thane is, is just near Bombay. It's as, it is not as big as Mumbai, of course. It is much smaller. So it was easier to handle a commissionerate like Thane. And, uh, I caught, got hold of my DCPs. One of them was the 
former SP of the of Thane city, who, who poor fellow lost his, I mean, he was subsumed into the commissionary. Like I was subsumed many years earlier when I was the SP of Pune, Pune city. I was the last SP. And then they formed a commissioner. Then you become, you remain as the DCP and you help the commissioner to do his job. So here I asked them, what should we do in order to make a difference from the old system to the present system? And they said, people will be happy if we, if we uh, liquidate these anti-social elements. And the anti-social elements are the ones who deal with with liquor, who deal with uh, gambling, who uh, the satta betting, and also the, uh, the prostitutes, uh, prostitution. These are the ones that really uh, rule the rules because they pay off the police, and that is the problem. Uh, they get, they are not put in check. Now. I said, how do we do that? Let me think about it. And fortunately for me, at that time, there was the police unions and the policemen. Uh, I called them and I said, what is your problem? I know what your problem is. The pro and I said, you can't fool me. I know for certain that you are fighting over the haftas, over the distribution of the spoils that the police stations get. So I said that, I am with you. If you want to fight it, I am there with you. And they were so enthusiastic that I saw that this was my best chance to do what the people wanted. Because after all, we are servants. We are servants of the people. And the people don't want these reasons <coughs> because they find that they, are, they, be, they really um, overstep their limits and um, they, are, they are not criminals who want to hide their their themselves or their identity. They in fact boast of their identity because they are so close to the police. So we took the help of these policemen and, and of course the DCPs and smashed all those. And I think we really smashed it because I remember one uh, after much after uh, when I was shifted to, to Mumbai city as commissioner, uh, one, uh, uh, journalist from from Thane coming and telling me that there was an old I know her, she was an old BJP uh, worker in one of the one of the small places there and uh, but she was very very tough and uh, uh, she it appears this one of my successors uh, wanted to show that he was as as uh, active as me in smashing this anti-social element. So he said, are you happy now, uh, Mrs. So-and-so? So she said, no, I'm not. Please do it like Rivero did it. Now, I think the difference was that I really meant to smash it. Whereas if you don't really mean to smash it, you just want to show and make a, make a show of it, which is very common, and then uh, uh, they are not going to People are not going to believe you. People are not fools. They understand very easily if the if the those uh, slum, those lords, those drug lords and others, if they really care about what the police is doing, and if they are frightened, the people would know. So this is in Thane. That was the main thing that I did. I was there for less than a year. Then I was transferred to Mumbai as the police commissioner. It was Bombay was my, uh, though I, my family uh, roots are in Goa, but basically uh, I was born in Bombay. My, my, my grand, great grandfather had, had, uh, had uh, migrated to Mumbai 200 years. Now it is 200 years. So at that time, say 125 years before. And uh, I consider myself as a Bombay Goan, Mumbai Goan. Even my cousins over there who are in Goa, they call me a Mumbai Goan. They call me and my brothers and my sister Mumbai Goans. And so um, Mumbai is my birthplace and my, uh, 
my karma. I uh, went to school there. I went to college there. And I know a lot of people. And in Mumbai, it's a little more difficult to do what I did in Thane. But if you ask me what was the main thing I did, well, in, in Mumbai, to make people remember, I saw one thing which, I, which really weakens the police, is that the policemen and the police officers at the lower level, they go and get their postings and their uh, you know, pressure put to on the commissioner from the mantra lab. From, from the politician. And each one of them has a, some political connection because they come from the villages, they come from different places in Maharashtra and there's always somebody to help them. So I called them all. I called their, the, not the whole lot of, of the force, but the main from each uh, uh, rank, even from the constabulary. And I said, I'm not going to do any of those transfers if I get any such pressures, you come to me. Every Friday, you can meet me. Every Friday, I will not meet the public. I'll only meet policemen, policemen's wives, policemen's children, policemen with whatever uh, requests they have or complaint they have. Anybody could come, but they should be policemen of their families. And uh, many of them I wanted transfers. Some of them were quite genuine. Some wanted, I presume, to make money. But I just told them that I'm going to watch you. I'll give you the place you want. But I'll watch you. If there are complaints, I'll send you to a far-off place. Do you know, in my three and a little more than three years I was there, I didn't get a single complaint. Nobody told me that so-and-so is a damn nuisance in the area. And because nowadays you get that type of... Even now that I've retired, you get these kind of complaints of people telling you that so-and-so is, is a nuisance. And uh, so uh, this was uh, what I did in, in Mumbai. Another thing I did in Mumbai, there is what we call a police notice. Every day it comes out. And it is in the name of the commissioner. Sometimes the commissioner himself doesn't know that such an order is given. And mainly for bandobas, when there is some bandobas to be done, there is a strike by Datta Samant. They will say so and so, and so and so many inspectors, so many sub inspectors, so many policemen from this police station will report to this police station for this work. That is how they would set, send out that whole thing in my name. So I said that they, sometimes the policemen don't know for what they are being sent. So I got the, all my DCPs together and I said, Y'all. Talk to your inspectors in the police station and find out what they think, how it should be tackled. And the inspectors, before telling you that, should talk to the policemen and find out at the time of their roll call what they should do, what they feel should be done, so that they feel involved in that work, that they are part of the whole uh, system. system or the whole uh, this that we have the whole, uh, uh, what is the, the whole thrust of our, this, to see that the work, the, that our meeting that particular problem is done in a proper way. And I think it, it does, did help. Uh, okay. So, so this is about uh, Mumbai involved the policemen in the decision making process, make them feel that they are part of the whole project, that they, they do their job much better. If they don't know what they're going there for, which very often happens, then it is pointless sending them on, a, on and, and making them stand. I've seen them standing and doing nothing, even when there is a big riot going on. So now, when they know what they're going there for and they are part of the decision, they will work much better. So this was a true thing that I did in Bombay, which they don't, I did, even today, they don't forget it. Then in Gujarat, I was sent there for four months. To, you know, the army, army people were there for five months before I was sent there. 
and they were pressing the government to relieve them. So the government was very keen on, uh, on imposing president's rule in case it was not possible to bring it under control. So they asked me, I was the DG of the CRP, so I was called to the, um, to the cabinet secretary's office or actually to his house and told that they have decided to send you to, to, to Gujarat. So I said, well, and they had kept on vehicle, the plane also ready for me to go. So, but I said that there's one condition I would like to impose that they should not interfere because in Gujarat, there's a lot of interference in transfers, continuous interference. I said, no interference of any type. I'm not going to listen to them. And they agreed. So I immediately found out uh, it was a communal riot and the uh, officer in charge of the army, the major general, the area commander, he told me that five battalions were on the streets and they had become useless for war. This is what he told me. He said, there was an attack. These five battalions are useless. And if I, uh, if I have to put them in battle shape, I require five months to put them in battle shape. If you keep them longer, I'll require so much time more to put them in battle shape. So I said, don't worry, I'll relieve them in one week. So I made, in, made in, uh, provision for paramilitary forces, not many, not so many as the army, five battalions, not necessary. Not even one battalion was required. But what I did was I found out who are the people from the Hindu side and from the Muslim side who were active in the in the riots, and I detained them, and I and nobody was allowed to 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 interfere in that. In the Hindu side, it was all the VHP people who used to write scurrilous uh, scurrilous messages on the walls of the of all the walls, and and in the Muslim side, it was the bootleggers who were in who were distributing arms, etc. So I I had them all locked up and the thing ended. Uh, so that was in Gujarat. And finally, Punjab. Punjab was totally different. It required a ch separate chapter altogether. I had no uh, experience of, of, uh, of uh, uh, terrorism. Terrorism is a different kettle of fish because we innocent people are, are targeted. It's not your enemies or somebody. It's not a different community that is, it's just that they want to cause terror. And they will murder, they'll just come down, they would come down and there, there was a Jagran or if there was a Kata reading, they would just shoot the people there. And as long as they were Hindus, they were, as long as they didn't have beards and, 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 and uh, head, headgear. So it was a very, very sad, in, and so we had to stop it. And uh, I had uh, laid down that the rules, but the police inspectors, six or seven of them, huge fellows, they, you know how the Sardars are, they came to see me. And they said, Rivero Saab, you come from Bombay, where the law is quite is different, where people are law abiding. It doesn't work over here. And if they see us on the road in our uniform, they shoot us because they know who we are. We don't know who they are, particularly at night. Because at night, Mr. Barnala, the CM, told me that the police don't go out. The police, when I asked them, they said that, look, we, if, if you allow us to go in plain clothes, we will, it's possible. Because when we go in uniform, they know we are policemen and they straight away shoot us. We don't know who they are, whether they are, whether they are uh, uh, agriculturists looking after their own farms or their own land, or they are uh, terrorists who are out to create trouble. So uh, I had to make those concessions. And I must say that I, I'm not Abit like you all. So I, or uh, I uh, did not even agree to them by word of mouth. 
because I was dumbstruck. And then I was, uh, uh, they were uh, the police, the, the high court judges who were staying next to me. Their houses were all next to mine. So I went and called on some of them. And two of them told me, Rivero Saab, just ensure that they don't come before us. <laughs> you see, just, uh, it was quite a different kettle of fish. So you had to make certain, when they are not operating within the law, they don't care for the law. You know, the normal uh, criminals, they, 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 uh, they try to run away or they bribe the police to get out of their, of their, uh, of their problems. But these don't, they just put a bullet through you. So uh, this, this is quite a different kettle of fish and I'd never experienced it before. I'd gone to uh, Northern Ireland, met the police commissioner there. And also I met the army people there. And uh, I learned that their problems were almost like ours, only one fifth the size of ours. So when I told them it's one fifth the size, we have five times more problems than you. They said you have five times more people. That is why you have that type of problem. So now uh, terrorism, I've, I've written all about it in my book. We had to, uh, uh, th there is only one way of stopping it because it is more a matter of, of, of emotion. And that is you, I'll use a person like Mr. Gill, because he was my, my number two and the charge of the operations. And uh, he, uh, he knew how to deal with this. And he told me he's a Sikh jat himself. And he said that a person like you coming from here doesn't afford to understand that. So that part of it, uh, he was good at. And uh, he would have his uh, informants and other things. Whereas the other part that winning over the, the great mass of the people that Mr. Chamanlal and I, Chamanlal was and number three in my this, he was he is also from Madhya Pradesh, Kada, a very, very fine and straight gentleman. But he would come, he and I would go to the villages and talk to the people, explain to them that this is not correct to kill people. And generally they felt what, I, what we said was correct, but they said they are our boys and they don't, uh, they are not working for themselves, but for, for the comb. So that kind of fear of talk, uh, working for the comb, that was eliminated only later when they found that the terrorists had become uh, more, uh, more a nuisance to them than uh, because Mr. Gill had made it very difficult for, for the, uh, for the even the common person, you know the 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 uh, police also, as Mr. Barnala would tell me, the police would be a nuisance to the people during the daytime, and the terrorists would be a nuisance at night. So we had to put that in order, and that is how we went about our work. I you know I I think I have spoken about the various jobs I've done. There is no better for better service. You see, we are, we are all members of a service. Service means you serve. You are a servant and you don't behave like, a, like as if you are the, the boss of the show. You have to serve the people. And if you serve the people, I think they will never forget it. The, I, so the police service is something that I uh, suited me because it was part of my inner, uh, uh, you know, formation, I would say, even at home, to see that justice is done, particularly to those who have no other voice like the poor. So they, they never forget. They would never forget. And even poor things, uh, small things, even their home matters, if you can just help them out, I think they'll never forget. So I, I was very happy that I served so many years in the police. I'm sorry that now that kind of service, sometimes I don't see indication of that type of service being being made, being done. And, and uh, there are of course officers who are 
bothered about it. Many of them leave. I feel sorry for that also, because leaving is no solution. You have to stay within and do your own bit and try to help out wherever you can so that people will know that there is some justice in this world, that if you do something right, you are not going to be troubled. If you do something wrong, of course, you will be, and the correct person will be caught. So this is, in general, the way that I tackle things. And let me tell you, I was not in no department of policing was I, was I a great um, uh, expert. I was more of a generalist, but I took my men along. And one thing that the IAS officers in Rajasthan had called me uh, at that time when I was the special secretary to talk to them. And they asked me, how is it that you could manage to resist the, the pressure of the politician for postings? I said, I can only think of one reason. The people were on my side. The police force was on my side. And with both those people on my side, the politicians were not able to do anything about it. So let's see how uh, others get the, the message. I have written about it in my book. But you can ask me questions, and I will be happy to reply. Yes. 